Hi there V-Suit, Steve Whitty here um, with a video. Um, this video is going to focus on 7 inch singles I've picked up over the past few months. Sort of waited till I had a sort of quite a decent collection to show you. Um, but um, before I go any further, I'm pleased to say that um, the old subscribers have, have started to climb. I'm now on 84 if I do believe. Let me just double check that. Which is really pleasing. Um, you know, obviously, we do this. Now I'm amazed that people do take the time to listen, uh, to to watch, and comment. I've even had over 4,000 views now, so that's even more pleasing. So a big shout out to new new subscribers. I think I might mention Darren Mo Darren Morris, Andrew Dravi, Sebastio Gennaro. Alvesda, Eric Valdez and Nico Malcolm I think is the other, other one who subscribed yesterday so big thank you to you all so as I said the focus of today's video is going to be on 7 inch singles now I did try to do this last week but for some reason I went it all went um, wrong to want of a better a better a, um, expression and so it never quite came up so I'm going to try it again this week and so here's my seven inch singles, recent buys. So the first one up is The Art of the Noise and Close to the Edit, the debut single from the from the band, which is by the uh, house band of producers, um, Dudley, Gary Manning, I think. I think one of the Trevor Vaughan was involved and Paul Morley might have been involved at some point. Um, groundbreaking. Um, they had a bigger hit with um, when they teamed up with Dwayne Eddy for their version of Peter Gunn. Baccarat, Yes Sir, I Can Boogie, which was the number one single in 1977. Uh, two Spanish sisters, I believe, Baccarat. Um, they did have a follow-up with Sorry I'm a Lady, and quite bizarrely, representing Luxembourg in the Eurovision Song Contest. I think Grieve I-69 might be pleased with this. I think it was the only decent track he liked off that this particular album. This is um, David Bowie and Blue Jean. I actually quite like this single. Um, it's just one of those. Um, it's it, it, yeah. Tonight's not a great album. I have to admit, it's certainly not one of his best. But um, I did like Blue Blue Jean. Yeah. Top ten single for him. Um, Glenn Campbell's just recently had his last album. Well, Adios has come out. This is supposed to be his farewell album. This is Rhinestone Cowboy. This is a song that I used to love in, in my childhood. I think my brother even liked it even more. But uh, yeah, you know, we always sing, sung along to that when that was on the radio. The Foundations, Baby, Now I've Found You. Uh, late 60s band, Foundations. Very popular pop. Build Me Up Buttercup was a popular single. I think this one got to number one in 1967. Yeah, I do believe it did get to number one. Um, I've met, I, I don't like really mention about this guy, but I did pick up this single. This is Gary Glitter's Rock and Roll Parts 1 and Parts Two. Now, part one was the original single. This had the vocals, um, which got in the top ten. But they flipped it over to part two, which is my, this is instrumental. I'm just going, hey, and, you know, you've still got the guitar that sounds like it's a wasp trying to escape a um, biscuit tin. Um, and that the part two got to number two in 1932. Got the Isley Brothers, Harvest for the World. You know, in the early. 70s, early to mid 70s, Isley Brothers were making some great music. I mean, I think I've shown you Three Plus Three uh, as an album. It's a great album. Another album that um, uh, Graham Prieber 69 showed was the Katrina and the Waves debut album, and this was the big single of it, Walking on Sunshine. Um, it's an album I've got to try and find and get hold, hold of myself because I used, I used to have a cassette and used to play it to death on the Walkman. Um, it's just a joyous pop album. This is just a great pop song. Um, talking the Eurovision, they're the last British act to win Eurovision in 1998. So we're nearly 30 years now. Even though the cover is got covered in tape, um, John Lennon, uh, Instant Karma, and it's backed by Who Has Seen the Wind. Now, whoever owned it originally, 
Banksham being a um, critic because it's got the, I think they've been an artist as well. They've drawn, I think, in the O's, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, and then put underneath Not Ono, oh and then B side, who has seen the wind, they've just replied, I don't know. Um, and then the apples, cooking apples, 1003, I think greedy must be referred to the number. Monsoon, ever so lonely, came out in 1982. Monsoon um, was a fusion of uh, uh, Indian music into sort of like uh, Western. It sort of carried on the tradition of the Beatles. Um, I'm trying to. And the girl, I can't remember the girl's name because she was a child actress. She was in pitched in Grange Hill. You, you can remember the name. Just if, uh, put comments on. Um, great single. The album's not bad, I heard it in the rec in my local record shop that was played. So, not bad at all. Um, they did do a nice version of Tomorrow Never Knows as well. Some Elvis Presley um, singles, She's Not You. You're the Devil in Disguise. Bossa Nova Baby. Kissing Cousins, and finally, Such a Night. We've built up quite a few Elvis uh, singles. Singles are a good way of building up. I'm going to try and hold back a little bit on the singles, I have to be honest, because it's more spaced than anything. But, and you don't uh, don't get to chance to play them, because I'm always going to have to get up and get down. That's the disadvantage. I want one of those dance old dance sets where you can just plonk them up, plonk, stack them up, and then they'll drop. And you, the original, how to create your own playlist. Prodigy Charlie, uh, this is the original mix, and then we've got the Alley Cat mix on the B-side. Now, Charlie, it sampled a public information film, Strack Adverts, that used to go around in the 70s, it used to be quite popular. And Charlie was the cat, this little boy, who would get himself into either thinking about going to, jumping into water or going off with a strange uh, strange whatever and the cat would go ah! and the boy would repeat Charlie says you should never go off with strangers strangers who offer you sweets yeah so that sampled that and that was like one of the early project singles a bit queen crazy little thing called love which was number two in the UK in 1979 got to number one in the US, backed by the light version of We Will Rock It. Wasn't it? Oh, Queen. This is Innuendo, which came out in 1991, and gave the band a number one hit single. Um, very over the top. In a way, it did remind me a little bit of um, Bohemian Rhapsody. It's quite telling that, take away the David Bowie single, which got to number one, the two solo Queen, the two Queen at number one singles that got on their own were overblown productions, which I think people liked. Fortunately, it looks like something's at the centre or out, out of this record. But, you know, I'm pleased to pick that up as a single. A song that I listened to a lot in the 80s, late 80s is The Rainmakers, Let My People Go Go. So you've got biblical overtones on this. Um, it was the only hit single they had in the UK. Um, yeah, I was pleased to pick this up because it brought back some memories there. One, they're all time great singles. All time great tracks. I think I might put this in my top 10 tracks. Smoking Roberts and the Miracles, The Tracks of My Tears. It's just that opening guitar break and then just breaks in you know this is this guy is feeling really down because he's inside he's hurting me even though he's um, expected to be the life the, the joy of, to the world life and soul of the party um, but just one of the great singles Tem T a sister's mercy temporal of 1992 I've got the original single on 12 inch the original Merciful release single. Um, 
this was the remix 1992 to sort of um, advertise the best of that came out. Um, and it's got here, touched by the hand of Ofra Haza. Ofra Haza was an Israeli Yemenite singer who had a hit in the late 80s, hits in the late 80s. Um, very beautiful lady, great voice. And unfortunately, it was a bit unlucky that she died of an AIDS-related illness, um, caught her, basically her husband cheated on her, and unfortunately caught the infection which he passed on to her. And his husband subsequently killed himself afterwards in guilt. I mentioned this in the Seven Deadly Sins video for Andy's final thing, contrast entry, uh, excerpt for Teenage Opera. It's a number two single in 1967, so it's 50 years old. It's probably my first musical introduction to music because I apparently used to sing along to it as a, ch as a child. I was two when it came out. If you heard it, you'd know why. A classic late 50s rock and roll, early 60s rock and roll, Boney Maroney, uh, Larry Williams, like the sticker and macaroni. And the final single in this batch, this is Superstition by Stevie Wonder, um, written for Jeff Beck, I believe. And so um, Jeff Beck didn't pick up on it, I think, I believe he does play guitar on here. And just really at the start of Stevie Wonder's golden period in the 70s. So I'm pleased to pick that one up. So, there's, those are my 7 inch singles for um, recent pickups. If you like what you've seen, um, thumbs up, hit that like, thumbs down, feel free to comment, I always love reading your comments and I'll always reply back. Um, if you liked what you've seen and you wish to subscribe, click the subscribe button, as I said, I've come to 84 now. Um, I'm absolutely pushing to see if we get to the 100, that would be nice, but uh, don't count your, you know, count your chickens. So, until the next video, BC, take care of yourselves. Bye.